It's been a while since I've spent time working on my sketchbooks outside. I'm not really sure where the past month has gone, so I wanted to grab this quiet minute and a dry day with both hands and get outside drawing again. This video is all about sketchbooks and how and why I love to use them in my painting practice. If you're new to using sketchbooks or you're feeling stuck using them as part of your workflow, I've popped a few pointers that I turn to when I find myself getting worked up at the blank page throughout this video. The first part of this video is dedicated to drawing outside, and in the second half I share a few of my other sketchbooks, as well as the main materials I use in them. My name is Orla and I'm an abstract artist and illustrator, documenting my process and my thoughts around creativity here on YouTube. Right now, I'm in the early stages, creating a new collection of paintings. I'm in research mode, collecting all my thoughts and my ideas, and sketchbooks have come to be one of the best places to explore these in. There are so many interesting approaches to using sketchbooks as a research tool, and I wanted to share some of the ways that I use mine with you today. In all honesty, I'm always a little bit nervous to film and share my sketchbook process. My books are so messy, they are unorganised and often full of drawings that might not be considered so good. It did feel a little bit vulnerable at first to share them, but I thought that doing so might be good for me to accept them and my approach to using them as they are instead. I mean, how often is it that we get a place to be totally chaotic and just play around with no judgement as adults? So instead, I'm going to be more proud of my messy sketchbooks. I'll get into it more later, but really these are places for learning. The end visual outcome is not the important part for me. Recently I found a summary I word I think which has summed up my sketchbook practice and I'm really happy to have found it because it's given me a bit of clarity on why I work outside a lot to inform the grounds for my painting practice and how I work outside a lot as well. And that word has been gathering. I've arrived at this word because I have been increasingly pulled towards looking for the details in the landscape and using my art practice as a way of tuning into nature and being able to look really closely at my surroundings. I find this practice really calming and meditative and regardless of the like regardless of making artwork or making beautiful things the actual practice of looking and drawing in its own right is really really valuable in my life. So it's been really nice to embrace that a bit more and really bring it into the forefront of how I work in my sketchbooks. I've come to the realisation that my sketchbooks are really a bit of a library. They're a, like a bank of all of these different shapes and observations, whether that's been emotional observations, how places have made me feel, or literal things that I'm looking at and capturing. And yeah, so they are this big bank of marks and textures, colours, shapes, experiences and I'm really looking forward to pulling them all together and kind of mishmashing them and seeing how that can push my work forward into final paintings. Today I'm focusing on the details that I can spot when I'm outside in nature, so that I can gather some visual inspiration from the buds, the grasses, some lichen, the movement of the water. I'm not looking to draw full views, but instead to document some of these textures and shapes that I can find around me. Initially I started doing this as I felt like I didn't know where to start when it comes to capturing the entire landscape. There's just so much to draw. So I found that simplifying things back to just one tiny section and detail helped to get me started. Now this process is really a pretty integral part of my approach to painting. If you're looking for a way to get into drawing outside and you're not sure where to start, perhaps consider giving that a go, because it really worked for me. If you'd like to give drawing outdoors a go but you don't really know where to get started, 
I have two different drawing challenges which might be useful for you. The first one is a series of visual prompts and things to look out for in nature. Hopefully they'll fit wherever you are. And the second drawing challenge I've made is for the winter and it's still ongoing. It's a series of guides on ways to draw rather than what specifically to draw. And I've designed these because especially with cold it's so easy to tighten up and so I thought a series of drawing prompts to help people loosen up would be useful. And those are both totally free to find those resources and they are over on my blog and my, on my Instagram too. So I'll link them down below so that you can find the instructions easily. Thanks to everyone who left a question about sketchbooks over on my community post. Many people asked about the role of sketchbooks in my work and how I transition from them to developed work and why they're a step in the process in the first place rather than just heading straight to the canvas. I've got a video that's coming up next month which will go into this in much more depth but in short for now, I only use my sketchbooks to practice, to test things out and to fill it with initial ideas and then I take that library and use it as a reference blended with photos or videos or sounds to inform the next step in my painting process. I think that having this collection of references, which are already my marks, helps to bring a little bit more of me to the actual paintings I make and can sometimes make the process of painting a little bit richer somehow. I always like to enter into my outdoor drawing sessions with an open mind. Sometimes I'll have a loose plan, like today's texture gathering, but then I'll get led somewhere else. I really love drawing sounds and music, especially sounds in nature, and so I started drawing the sound of the river, which was really pretty impossible to ignore. I think going with the flow and changing the focus in your sketchbooks and your sessions outside is totally okay. And if it really bothers you for not having things grouped or in order in your sketchbook, stay tuned for my sketchbook sharing, well it's really hard to say, my sketchbook sharing session later in this video. It might offer you an idea for having space for both improvisation and organisation. I've never really been fearful about drawing on top of my work or drawing on top of old work or ripping things up because I feel like everything leads to the next thing in art and so there's no need to really be precious. The worst thing that happens is that you get a new idea or the worst thing that happens is that you paint over it and that forms the grounds for a new project which are both very nice outcomes to be honest. I wanted to take a minute to thank my amazing Patreon members over on my Patreon page, The Outdoor Sketchbook Collective. I've been creating tutorials and guides to help people find their own creative voice and to loosen up in their painting and drawing with a focus on exploring nature and landscape in the natural world. At the moment, I'm working on a series of tutorials to document my entire process from start to finish to create a collection of paintings. So if you are new to painting and you're looking for some guidance around the creative process, or if you have been painting for a while and you're looking for some new ideas to rejuvenate your practice, perhaps consider checking it out over there. On top of the tutorials, we also host a monthly meetup via Zoom so that anyone from all around the world can join in. And there I host a live workshop and an opportunity so that we can have a chat and meet each other and share what we've been working on. So if you're looking for a little bit of all of that, consider checking it out and I'll pop a link down below. Before I share with you the materials that I'm using at the moment, I wanted to say that the main thing that you can invest in for yourself is time in practicing and actually just doing it. 
I think it's so easy to get caught up and hold yourself back from making because you don't have all the fancy gadgets or paints with the best pigment quality, etc, etc. It's amazing what you can make with really cheap materials and if that's a factor for you, just get stuck in and use what you've got. But with all that said, here are the main materials that I'm using at the moment. So I paint in acrylics, so the acrylics that I use are either System 3 or I use golden paints, but I'll probably save those paints for commissions and final paintings. I really love pulling line work into my paintings and for that I love using Posca pens if I want a really graphic line. I'll either use like a white one or a black one, particularly in my research sketches. The other thing that I love to use is willow charcoal and I use that all the time. Just whatever you can find, I think mine's by Windsor & Newton. The other material that I really love to use are soft pastels and the ones I've got are also Windsor & Newton. I think they're just called Windsor & Newton Artist Soft Pastels. Yeah, they are. <laughs> And then lastly, the other drawing tool that I love to use are oil pastels. And if you've watched my videos before, you'll have heard me banging on and on about them. And the ones I'm using right now are these Karen Dash Neo Pastels uh, Genève versions. I had a whole bunch of their water soluble ones too, which I really recommend as, as well. The only reason I'm not showing you with them is because I've used them all up and I need to get more of them. But yeah, any oil pastels, by Karan, Karan Dash, Karan Dash, I need to learn how to say it, sorry. <laughs> by this brand, they're lovely, I really recommend them. And they are a very dry quality, so it means that if you're out in the landscape sketching, they're not going to be too sticky. The last thing I'll share with you are brushes I use. I'm not a person that spends a lot of money on brushes, I just, I don't see the point with acrylic paints. Maybe that's because I've just never splashed the cash to do it and I'm really happy with what I use. And that is simply hardware brushes. They are by Stanley. And I love using these square brushes. These are my main kind of shape brush that I use. Okay, so I'll start out by sharing with you this sketchbook and I got it from Jackson's Art. It's a lovely cloth bound sketchbook and it is, what is it? It's 30 by 24 centimetres on 160 GSM paper. And this paper is brilliant because it can just take so much material. So this sketchbook is brilliant because when it lays flat, you can get these really lovely wide vistas like this page here. This sketchbook was all about a trip I took to Orkney and I was working in collaboration with a group of musicians and composers to translate both their music and the landscape that we were researching into a series of paintings. These paintings later went on tour with a programme of music all over the UK and further north and it was just one of those really beautiful projects to be involved in. You can see that there's an awful lot of line work going on here. And this was because this was my first trip to Orkney as an adult. And if you've ever been, the landscape is just absolutely gobsmacking. It's amazing. And I really wanted to just spend as much time as possible immersing myself in the place and taking it all in, properly soaking it up, rather than getting my paints out because that somehow felt a bit distracting at the time. And so I chose to work with just mostly pens and some oil pastels to be able to quickly note down all of these different compositional ideas. I really like using my sketchbooks as note-taking spaces to write out some ideas as well. So these pages here are mind maps of the different compositions I was responding to, the, the pieces of music, and all of the research that I'd found that related to them trying to figure out what I was going to do for my painting plans. So I won't go through the whole book. Let's move on to the next one. So this one is literally just like a baby version of the one I just showed you. It's another cloth bound one. And I love working in these ones because, I don't know, it's something about the cloth that makes you feel a bit fancy. 
As you can see here, I titled the front of the sketchbook. This was in the hope that I would be able to stick to one topic within a book, but alas, that wasn't quite the case. This book was meant to be all about drawing to the sounds and the music from the landscape. And so I did a good job at the start, but then I ended up heading into capturing a couple of vistas, like this one here. So it's this kind of back and forth between sounds from the landscape and visual inspiration too in this little sketchbook. Again, this is the 160 GSM paperweight. It's really beautiful and that's what it looks like when it goes through the light. And this little one, it is 17 by 11.5 centimetres and 160 GSM paperweight. And this one is also from Jackson's Art Online. This one takes me way back to just after I graduated. So that must have been around 2018, 2019. And this one I wanted to share with you because it's the main way I started using sketchbooks really. And I think this process could be really good if you're the kind of person that needs some organisation in your sketchbooks, but you also want to work outside. You can see that these pieces of paper are all stuck in. And this is my main method of sketchbooking really, is to work loose leaf on paper when I'm outside in the landscape. So if you're wanting to do some plein air research, I really, really recommend this method. It lets you work on loose pages and then when you come back inside, you can pair them and group them if that's important to you to have things in a rough order. I also really like cutting up my drawings and being able to move them around like I've done with this one here. And it lets you be able to turn them in different positions so that you get a few extra ideas for composition. Okay, this one I have literally just finished and started it in 2023 and it's one of my lovely square sketchbooks that I love to use. I had a pile like so high of pieces of paper that I'd drawn onto, lots of different sketches and paintings and I didn't want to collage with them so I decided to pull them all together into the sketchbook and have a play at how I could pair them to get some ideas. So these are some sketches from my underwater residency when I was snorkeling. These sketches I did actually under the water. Here are some more refined ones I did out of the water as well. I quite like pairing drawings together that aren't actually related to one another. Like these two, the one on the left was drawn maybe in 2014 and the one on the right was in 2023. But I like being able to put them against each other and the kind of pairings give me new ideas. This sticking in process, not only does it let you organize your thoughts, but it also lets you look at the backs of drawings as well, if that's something that you play with. This is one that I had cut into quarters it pulled itself around to give me a new, a new understanding of its composition. And I quite like doing this with drawings that I don't think have worked out at all. I paired these ones together because I wanted to see the juxtaposition of the really watered down acrylic versus the really opaque. I think this organisation and rearranging process really helps me understand how different mediums can be paired together and how different colours might sit next to each other as well without actually having painted it in the actual painting. And I also really like adding words in next to paintings that I've made to see how this relationship between uh, text and painting can evolve. And as usual, lots of mind maps going on to help me work through the process. I'll use these sketchbooks both at the very initial research stage where I am just now, but also as a development tool if I'm in the middle and I'm stuck. I'll use them, especially in this cutting and sticking process, to help find my feet again and find some direction.
This stage, the research stage of a painting process, is probably my most favourite part of creating a body of work. And I'm always really, really interested in how other people choose to research for their work or whether you do or not. So let me know down in the comments. Do you use sketchbooks as part of your creative practice? How do you gather your ideas? I think the creative process is endlessly fascinating and I'm always looking to be inspired by how other people approach their work too. I hope you've enjoyed having this sneak peek into my sketchbooks and some of my raw and unfiltered processes. And I hope they've given you some new ideas to get you outside and drawing or developing your work in your sketchbooks. And as always, thank you so much for spending your time watching this video and I hope to see you outside. <laughs>